Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And in this video, I wanted to go back to the transit method of detecting exoplanets and have a look at something that can actually cause variation in those timings of the transits, basically. So the transits don't always occur at the time you would expect them to. And actually the duration can also change. And it's due to the precession of the elliptical orbit. So if the planet is on an orbit, this is elliptical, that elliptical orbit will then basically process around 360 degrees. And as the orientation changes relative to us, it can actually change when the next transit occurs. So the time between each transit can change, as well as the time it takes to actually pass in front of the star. So just a recap then of the actual transit method itself. So this is where a planet passes in front of a star as we look at it, and it causes some of the light to be blocked out we get a dip in brightness, which we actually detect as a transit. So you get this nice U-shaped dip if it's a fairly straightforward, simple transit. We would also expect that each subsequent one or each one that happened after that should be the same time period, really. So if we had a transit one, the time between transit one and transit two should be the same as between transit two and transit three because it relates to their orbital period. So a single planet with nothing else interesting going off there on a circular orbit, we would expect it to go round and transit, and the time period between those would always be the same. So you wouldn't expect any variation between the time that occurs. However, there are changes that can happen that actually mean that that transit happens earlier or later. Now, there's a few reasons why that can occur. Some of those are apparent reasons, like parallax or proper motion of the star, they actually change the geometry of the configuration of how we look at the star. It can actually make the transit appear slightly earlier or later, depending on how you look at it, but that's an apparent change. There are also kind of real physical changes to the system. For example, if it's tidally decaying, it's getting closer to the star, the orbital period decreases, so actually the time between each transit will decrease, and that's kind of a real change in the system. This one we're interested in is going to be due to the actual orbit itself. Uh, because it processes, it changes its kind of orientation relative to Earth. So the precession of an elliptical orbit will affect its duration and its transit timing. So if you know anything about elliptical orbits, you will know that the orbital velocity is not constant. With a circular orbit, it should be constant all the way around. It's the same distance from the star the planet is. It doesn't vary its orbital velocity. However, with an elliptical orbit, as it gets closer to the star, it's going to orbit faster than when, it, when it's further away. So as you basically rotate that orbit around, the velocity that we actually observe it passing in front of the star is going to change. It's also going to go round the orbit at slightly different times, depending on how it's orientated. So we, we actually will detect it slightly earlier or slightly later. So the fastest orbital period will be at the pericenter, which is the closest point, And then the slowest will be basically on the opposite side. So a full half an orbit around, half a phase round or 180 degrees round, that's going to be its slowest when it's furthest away from the star. Now, if it occurs at the slowest part, like here, so let's say the orbit is arranged like this, we see it passing in front of the star whilst it's at the slowest part of its orbit. The duration of that transit will take that longer. So we would expect in this configuration here for the duration of the transit to last a little bit longer than in any other part of its orbit. The same is then true for the opposite. So when it's actually at the pericenter, we would expect the duration to be at its shortest. So that's the shortest duration we're going to get. The longest is the other way around. And anywhere in between that will be obviously somewhere in between, but it will vary. So if you rotate it around, we're going to get a varying duration occur. So if you also rotate it around as well, because the orbital velocity is changing as it goes around this orbit, it means that depending on how it's orientated like this, it can make it appear earlier or later because it might be traveling faster up to the point that it's going to pass over to the star. That will change its timing. So it might occur earlier because it's actually traveled faster to that point. And the other way around, if it's traveling slower up to that point, maybe it's actually going to occur later. Now, 
orbits are expected to process. So pretty much all orbits, elliptical orbits, are going to process for some reason or another. And there's actually a variety of reasons as to why that can occur. So it can occur due to tidal forces. So the star and the planet are going to um, cause tidal bulges on one another. There's going to be rotation-induced ones where the star and the planet are not spherical because they're rotating. That can also cause precession of the orbit. And also there's some effect from general relativity as well. But for something like a hot Jupiter, the precession of its orbit is going to be mostly dominated by the tides because it's so close to the star. So for those sorts of planets, it's dominated by the tides. But anyway, thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then do check out some of the other videos.